In December of 2021, Devon Franklin and Megan Good announced that they would be getting a divorce after nine years of marriage. As the Black community debated different aspects of the Franklin's journey, many mentioned how Megan had been treated by so-called church people. Like this cringy moment during the Franklin's book tour when a woman attempted to rebuke Megan for her wardrobe choices. Amen. Amen. And the Lord let me come to push past the judgment. Hold up. Okay, because this is real. Because you have to make sure what you say and what you do match up. You understand? Okay, so we're going to cover up, right? We gonna cover Wait a minute. Up. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. No, 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 no. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. No. That ain't, that ain't, no. That is not what we're here for. She's not going to cover up. She's going to wear what she want to wear. In the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 She's going to wear what she wants to wear. In the name of Jesus. Or how about the several interviews where she was talking about attending church less frequently because of the negative interactions with other members? Um, if you want to correct me or if you want to teach me something per se, um, because you feel that you should, while well, we're all my daughters, anyway. Um, but uh, it wasn't in love, you know, it was very, um, it was almost kind of like brutal attacks I was getting um, on my character, um, on my husband, on different things. So I wasn't ready for that. And I think the first maybe two and a half years that I was very, I stopped going to church. I mean, I still very much was in my Bible and my relationship with God actually only got closer. Um, but I stopped going to church places because I, I felt, even if I was welcome, I felt unwelcome. And I felt um, that the people who were supposed to love me the most were feeling the worst kind of just like, you know, face me instead of whatever. So anyway, it's been a progression in that sense. I did feel pressure at first, and I was like, Lord, what am I supposed to do it? And I just felt the Lord telling me, I just need you to be you. Whatever season you're in, brother, I'll have you change at some point, brother, I'll never have you change. I need you to focus on me. I need you to see who I want you to be. I need you to understand that you're not for everybody. You're for certain people, and that's fine. It's confusing. After being celebrated as a talented Black actress by the Black community for years, why was Megan treated so badly by church people when she married Devon? If her and her husband's book about abstinence was a bestseller, why did it seem like she never quite fit in to the culture of her readership? I have a few guesses. But first, a disclaimer. I'm not saying all people in the church were negative about Megan or mean to her. When I say the church, or church people, I'm talking about a specific group of people who call themselves Christians, who levy criticisms at the Franklins. I'm not talking about every solitary black Christian in America. Okay, now that that's out of the way, let's talk about the landscape of dating for the average black Christian woman real quick. Within American Christianity at large, men are less religious than women. The black American community is the most religious ethnic group in America, but also follows the same religious gender trend. Black American men are less religious than black American women. There are less men who formerly affiliate with American Christian institutions than women. When looking at church attendance, women far outperform men. In the black community, mass incarceration, deindustrialization, and other trends have created a shortage of black men in society at large. The black men who remain are still less likely to attend church regularly, like their non-black male peers and female counterparts. All of this means that there are more women than men in the black church. But also, black women are less likely to marry outside of their race than black men. This data point is often misunderstood, so let's be careful when breaking this down. Of all the black men that are married, the majority of them are married to black women. But the percentage of black men that are married to non-black women is about twice as large as the percentage of black women who are married to non-black men. So the research shows that black cisgender heterosexual women prefer to marry black men. Furthermore, singleness theology leads women to believe that following a set of spiritual practices will make it more likely for them to find their God-chosen spouse. If they do not find a spouse, the theology implies that they just aren't ready or it is God's will for them to be single. Singleness theology conditions women to believe that God decides who gets married and that it's improper, perhaps even wrong, for them to take action to find a spouse. So what does this have to do with the Franklins and how Megan Good was treated by the church? Well, women like Megan Good challenge the church's culture about dating, relationships, and marriage. 
Since black women are more religious and more active in the church, they are very likely to have been led to believe that their church attendance, spiritual devotion, and sexual abstinence are qualities that make them more likely to attract an equally yoked spouse. When a person like Megan Good marries the church equivalent of the high value man, it seems fundamentally unfair. How can God allow Megan to marry a man like Devon when she has spent the majority of her life in an ungodly industry, elevated as a sex symbol? Those are not my views. I'm simply stating the mindset of some people in the church. Megan has talked about having a close relationship with God and a strong spirituality before she met Devon. But for many church people, that is simply not enough. Instead of criticizing the singleness theology, which has conditioned them to believe that good results come to those who wait, they criticize Megan instead. The other issue is that marriage is a status symbol in the church. Let's call it a luxury good. As the gender imbalance in church gets worse and marriage is less common in society, those who get married are elevated, whether intentionally or unintentionally. The magic of luxury items is the perception of scarcity. The idea that the item in question is not common justifies the higher price. Ever heard about how diamonds are actually the most common gemstone in the world? Or what about the article years ago about a name brand burning inventory in order to limit the amount of merchandise on the market? In these cases, scarcity is manufactured to maintain inflated prices, but it doesn't have to be. In the case of marriage in the church, the scarcity is real. Singleness theology attempts to mask the reality by spiritualizing extended unwanted singleness. People are perversely incentivized to create arbitrary standards and guardrails that make getting married so theologically confusing and convoluted that fewer people are able to do so. This maintains a special status for those who are married. Megan Good seemed to have skipped all the pseudo-spiritual prerequisites for marriage while continuing to subvert conservative mandates on wardrobe and behavior. Her ability to do so poses a threat to those who benefit from being a part of the married few and those who have invested years following all the rules of singleness theology. The insult and tragedy of singleness theology is after several years of following its precepts, many women in the church watch as women like Megan Good, who form their own sexual ethics and developed an identity outside of religiosity, get married to the God-chosen spouse that those women believe they deserve. Another thing is that women like Megan Good expose the truth of what makes for compatible relationships. For many high-profile Christian men, having a spouse who they can be authentic with and trust is more important than having one who can recite passages from the Bible or is involved in many church activities. The other uncomfortable truth is that these men still value physical attractiveness, which often is determined by societal norms. Due to the number of unmarried women in the church, in most cases, Christian men do not need to make a trade-off between physical attraction and spiritual devotion. They can have both. Throughout the history of Black American religion, women have been sold the idea that adopting standards of modesty and conservative sexual ethics will elevate their status and make them more desirable. They were told that a devotion to a religious life would put them in position to be found by a godly man. In the past, it looked like this worked. It was uncommon for a woman to reach the age of 30 and have never been married. There were more men in the church and more economic opportunities for men. Today, this is not the case. The current demographics of the church and national economy have changed, but theology has not, leaving many women hurt, confused, and angry. I do not want women to become obsessed with sex or marriage. I also do not want women to get rid of their spiritual lives and only care about finding a relationship. There are people in the church who do not want to be in romantic relationships and do not want to get married. They don't have to justify their choices. But these individuals exist amongst others who are not happy with their current relationship status, but feel powerless to take any action. Instead of being mean to people like Megan, we must turn our attention and anger to the belief systems that hold us hostage. We must call out a culture that tells people to suppress their desires under the veneer of religiosity. Thank you for watching Black Belief. Be sure to subscribe, like, and turn on notifications so you don't miss the latest video.